I live in Kiwani County. And in 2004, there was an incident that happened to the Tremel family that sent their infant daughter to the hospital. Their well had been contaminated with liquid manure. <coughs> their daughter was in intensive care. In 2014, in Door County, which is just to the north of my, my county, 16 people were poisoned with liquid manure, sending another infant to the hospital with E. coli poisoning. That infant was so sick that her diapers were filled with blood. In October of this year, we had a home when they turned on their taps to get water, it ran with manure. We have 34% of the wells tested in Kiwani County are contaminated with E. coli and or nitrate. And I use the number 34% because in Kiwani County there has been a well testing program that has been ongoing for years. It was not funded by our county government, it was not funded by our state government, and it was not funded by our federal government. It was funded by the citizens. And for years, The people that were contributing to that contamination said that our numbers didn't count because they weren't scientifically based. <laughs> Through the years, we had 30% is what we always had used. The DNR funded a study, and it came back as 34%. So now that's the number that I use. Our wells have also been compared to that of a third world country. There has been viral testing that shows that we have salmonella in our water, cryptospermodium, and I can't even say it correctly, and numerous other viruses that are showing up and that are being detected. Cryptosporidium. Cryptosporidium, that's how you say it. <laughs> All three of our waterways are on the EPA's impaired waters list. We regularly get testing that would, for E. coli that would close a beach. We have some of our waters that are river waters that actually are testing above 10 parts per, 10 parts per million of nitrates, which is the drinking water standard and nobody is doing anything about it. We have been working on these issues for a decade. The citizens of Wisconsin deserve to be treated with respect and given the protections that our state agencies are supposed to be doing. The Wisconsin DNR, while has many good employees, overall it's continuously being stripped of its ability to do its job, including something that all of us should understand is, in this next budget, our DNR is being proposed to be split apart. <coughs> We need to make sure as we're talking with our legislators today that they restore the funding for the DNR to do the scientific work that is important not only for our natural resources, but more importantly, for our human health. We must ensure 
that our children have safe drinking water. We must ensure that we have clean water for the, the fish. We've been testing our streams for four years, streams and rivers. In four years, we have not seen a full-grown fish. We have only seen minnows in one location in three streams, and that's at the headwaters of the Anape River, which is in Door County. Our county has 16 CAFOs, concentrated animal feeding operations. They're proliferating not only in my county, but they're coming to yours. While our water has been highly tested, highly looked at, highly analyzed, yours most likely has not. You may be actually having the exact same problems that we do, but if you don't have anybody testing for it, you'll never know these situations. It's time to get organized as we all have. And not just about water for our own special interest as to what is contaminating us in our own location that we know about, but what is happening to our water that we don't know about. It's time to get educated on all of these issues, whether it's frac sand mining, regular mining, CAFOs, because the one thing that we know and that we've learned through the years is that the CAFO model is the exact same model that they're utilizing for all of these other water issues. <coughs> CAFOs were permitted because the Dairy Business Association put forth a set of rules that would limit public participation. And it was adopted by our legislature. For those of you in frac sand mining areas, you know that they put forth a set of rules that allows for minimal public participation by the citizens. Those up in the Bad River area know that the first thing they did was ask for a change in the mining regulations. It's all the same. And we need to learn from each other and to fight together so that we can make sure that we have clean water for all of us. It's time that we actually stand up, just like we are today, and let our voices be heard. Our legislators in my area repeatedly will tell us that nobody in Madison knows what Kiwani County is. <laughs> yeah, right. Nobody in Madison knows about our groundwater problems. So today, we need to go and go to as many legislators and tell them about our problem, our groundwater issues, so they can't deny that they don't know what is taking place. The same goes for everybody else. If your issue is frac sand mining, or conventional mining, or whatever your issue might be, you need to make sure to hit as many legislators, not just your own, to tell those people how it affects your life, how it is going to have an impact on your future and your children's future. It is time that we do this stand up and make sure that our voices are heard. Thank you.